Hello. Um, today we're going to be talking about uh, the cell life cycle, specifically looking at mitosis, and this is in connection with Bio 30 Lesson 3.5.2. Uh, the curriculum outcomes that we're going to be looking at is the general outcomes students will be able to describe the processes of mitosis and meiosis. Um, more specifically, students will be able to uh, explain in general terms the events of the life cycle, of the cell cycle rather, um, such as interphase, mitosis, cytokinesis, and compare the processes of mitosis and meiosis. <clears throat> so cell division in general is the reproduction of cells. Um, Apoptosis is generally controlled uh, death of cells. Uh, mitosis is the nuclear division of somatic cells, and meiosis produces sex cells. Okay, so interphase is one of the phases in the cell cycle, and it is the longest phase. Uh, most uh, somatic cells spend the majority of their lives in this phase, and this phase can be subdivided into um, G1, S, and G2 phases. Okay, so here you have, um, you know, the cell cycle. And uh, so for eight or more hours in cell cycle, you have G1, where normal cell functions are occurring. So liver cells are doing liver things, brain cells are doing brain thing, things and that uh, type of thing, plus cell growth. Uh, now also what's happening in G1 is the duplication of organelles and protein synthesis. And that's important because the organelles are going to be split, um, you know, when the cell divides. Now in the S phase, and this is usually six to eight hours, um, you have DNA replication and the synthesis of histones. Now histones are going to be the things that the DNA wraps around to produce chromosome structures. And then you have two to five hours, G2, um, protein synthesis. And these timelines are approximate because they will vary from cell type to cell type and will vary from, uh, you know, organism to organism too. And then you have, you can see the mitosis um, part of the cycle, which is one to three hours. And it has, is subdivided into um, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. And you'll see that cytokinesis um, kind of encompasses part of anaphase and telophase. Okay, so you'll have uh, these phases of actual cell division, and then there's an indefinite period, the G0, so to speak, where the cell just kind of does its thing. Okay, uh, so this would be... Um, a diagram that I would, you know, take a screenshot of and, uh, you know, mark as something for studying because you want to know all of these phases and what's happening in them. And now we're going to get more specific about what's happening in the mitosis phases. So uh, now DNA replication, which remember happens in S phase, uh, we'll go into more detail about that, but you know, you will have the double helix uh, being replicated uh, during the S phase. Okay, so for mitosis or nuclear division, it has four phases, prophase, metaphase, anaphase, and telophase. During uh, cytokinesis, the cytoplasm divides and cell division ends. Okay, and so here we have um, kind of some pictures um, of what's happening here. Okay, so interphase, you'll have a nucleus, but uh, as mitosis begins in early prophase, the nucleus will disappear, okay? And you'll see the appearance of spindle fibers, okay? And you'll also see that the chromosomes are starting to, to thicken uh, into visible structures. Uh, now, once you get into late prophase, you'll be able to see, um, you know, distinctly chromosomes, okay? Now, once you get into metaphase, you have chromosomes with two sister chromatids, okay? So that means that each chromatid 
has identical information from its sister chromatid. So the chromosomes are double-stranded structures uh, that have two equal halves, basically. And in metaphase, they line up so that one side of the chromosome is facing each of the poles, okay? So that one chromatid, uh, one of the sister chromatids is on one side of the metaphase plate, which is down the middle of the, the cell, and the other sister chromatid is on the other side. And you can see that the uh, spindle fibers, you know, are attached to the chromosomes, and that's what's really moving them. You know, how do the, the chromosomes get lined up? Well, the spindle fibers are moving them to that position. It's not like they're swimming around, okay? And if you look at a specific, you know, um, spindle fiber, it's going to be comprised of these chromosomal microtubules. Okay, so once you go to anaphase, that's when uh, the sister chromatids are pulled apart. Okay, so now you still have the same number of chromatone, chromosomes, but they're single-stranded chromosomes instead of double-stranded, but they have exactly the same information. Okay, and that's going to be important because in meiosis it happens differently. <clears throat> You don't have the sister chromatids being separated in meiosis one. Okay, you have homologous chromosomes being separated. But you can see by the, the photograph up top that it looks like uh, there. So anaphase, the um, sister chromatids are being pulled towards the, the poles. And then in telophase, you're going to see the cleavage furrow beginning. And uh, you'll see that the nucleus reintegrates. So you have the, the re, um, I don't know, visualization, uh, integration of the nucleus. And then cytokinesis occurs where the two daughter cells have actually split. And notice that the two daughter cells have identical genetic information because they each have one of the sister chromatids um, in each cell. But uh, instead of having a double-stranded chromosome, there would be a single-stranded. And that is why the S phase of the interphase is so important because that DNA needs to duplicate uh, before the cell division can occur again. <clears throat> Uh, so mitotic rate in cancer, generally the longer the life expectancy of a cell, the slower the mitotic rate. So some cells undergo frequent mitosis. Uh, growth factors can stimulate cell division. Abnormal cell division produces tur tumors or uh, neoplasms, which can be benign, which means that they'll kind of stop on their own, or malignant, which means they don't stop and they will be invasive and cancerous. And uh, malignant cancers can spread via metastasis, metastasis rather. And that means that, let's say, uh, you know, one of the cancer cells uh, breaks off from a tumor and goes down the bloodstream and then, um, you know, implants in a different area and continues, you know, dividing. That means that the cancer would have been spread from the original tumor to uh, an additional site somewhere else in the, the body. Now, oncogenes are genes that are known to be connected in some way to cancer. So normally these are genes that are helping control the mitosis of the cell, uh, the mitotic rate. And, um, you know, a lot of research is going into that. Okay, so here you see more of a bigger picture of mitosis, so you start with the parent cell. Prophase, uh, chromatin condenses into chromosomes, the nuclear envelope disappears. Metaphase, the chromosomes align at the equatorial plate, uh, and the sister chromatids face opposite poles. Uh, in anaphase, the sister chromatids separate, and the centromeres divide. In telophase, the chromatin expands, which means the chromosome structures kind of disappear, and nuclear envelope uh, is reappearing, and the cytoplasm divides, leaving two daughter cells. 
Now, here's just a bit of a um, comparison of chromosomes and mitosomiosis. Uh, you have, you know, the same number of chromosomes to begin with in mitosis and meiosis, and uh, you're going to have chromosome du duplication. But in mitosis, you have, uh, you know, the chromosomes aligning so that sister chromatids face opposite poles. But in meiosis, you have homologous chromosomes uh, lining up so that each chromosome, uh, you know, double-stranded chromosome, will go to one or the other in meiosis one. Now, when we talk about meiosis specifically, we'll go into more detail about that. Uh, but then the second meiotic division, basically just like mitosis, where the sister chromatids line up on the metaphase plate, and, you know, one chromatid goes one way and one chromatid goes the other way. So the big difference is that there's two divisions in meiosis instead of one, and that in metaphase, in meiosis one, homologous chromosomes line up in the, along the metaphase plate. Um, and in mitosis, uh, the chromosomes line up individually and sister chromatids line up to opposite poles. Now differentiation is the process of specialization, and this results from the inactivation or activation of particular genes, uh, produces populations of cells with limited capabilities. So blood cells will do blood cell things, but they can't do bone cell things. You know, differentiated cells will form tissues. Uh, so you should now be familiar with the cell cycle, mitosis and cell differentiation, uh, terminal differentiation, and the G0 phase.